Okay guys, I wanted to get um, very very personal today and I just wanted to share a part of me that's been very um, I'll be honest, I feel like that part has been a traumatizing part of my life and I mean a lot of people would be like, oh you're being ungrateful, you had you were able to give birth and you were able to get pregnant um, I think I'm very lucky in one of in all of those ways I think I am very lucky but I feel like that whole pregnancy was really traumatizing my son just turned 18 months as of this month so he's one and a half years old and um, whenever someone asks me how's your pregnancy I don't want to say much I don't like saying much uh, I'll be like it was hard I was on IV for six plus months and for the last three months I was taking a medication that I thought could hurt the baby this video is really hard to do at the moment and um, this is probably gonna be a really long long video and um, I thought about doing this video one day but I think I'm finally at a place where I can feel like I can talk about it. I mean, I did talk to people. I'll, I'll just, I will just brief it with them. I'm like, I did not have a good pregnancy, and I'll just quickly summarize it for them. I'll be like, this is what happened, blah blah blah. But then, no one except you knows the type of trauma I went through, and it wasn't easy. It was really hard, and really, I like to think of it. I feel like it's kind of like my defense mechanism not to think about it. And I always go like, it was a blur. That's how I tell people. That's how I try to remember it. Because I don't want to remember that part of my pregnancy. Maybe I should embrace it. I'm not sure if I'm ready to embrace that yet. But it wasn't something... Um, I mean, I don't think there... Like, now when I'm talking about it, there wasn't much to embrace. It's just... That was just me. That was my body. I just got to accept what my body is. And it's not easy. It's really hard, guys. Okay, so let's start with the background um i grew up among brothers and now when i look back at it i grew up as this really tough person or i was taught to be really tough or just i guess uh and i always thought of myself as a person who could handle anything i'm just like i'm just a really strong person not just emotionally but physically i feel like i can handle a lot of challenges that come at me and i wanted to be that person um who didn't want to be dependent on anyone i mean i get you know when you are in a relationship or you're in a marriage you have to be dependent in some ways or other uh, which is totally normal but you know i just didn't want to be at a place where i'll be like i can't get up i can't get up to go to the washroom or i can't get up to go and even get a glass of uh, water or i can't keep anything down my husband i remember my husband was like cleaning up my vomit because I was throwing up so much. I mean, I just didn't want to be that dependent on anyone. And I had to be, I became one of that person. When I found out I was pregnant, I was actually happy like anyone else, and like any other person who wants to get pregnant would be. And um, it was all good till like one and a half week after I found out I was pregnant. Um, I started getting nausea and stuff and I thought that was pretty common and mine was extreme I'm not sure how extreme it is for women out there but we were living in a condo at that time so um, this was my bedroom this was a living room this was the kitchen I was connected with the living room and I was sleeping on this side of the bed and if my husband was brewing or making coffee in the kitchen I would smell it all the way there and I would literally throw up and um, it came to a point where he stopped making stuff in the house because um, I hated chicken. I hated like majority of the things like and I'm pretty sure that's common with like a lot of women who get pregnant and who go to the first trimester. Um, but one thing, I mean, other than the nausea that I had for um, food, I guess, I started throwing up and I thought that was pretty common as well because again, most of the women go through that. So for me, I don't, I don't know how extreme it is for women, but um, I found out later that I have this thing called hyperemesis. I don't even know what it's called. It's called hyperemesis. Oh my God, I'm going to search this up. Hyperemesis gravidarium. That's what it's called. So I didn't know I had that till I was in my third month. So 
it was it's an extreme form of morning sickness and I wasn't able to keep anything down including water I wasn't even to I wasn't even able to keep the water down my stomach that's how bad it was like forget food forget any type of drinks water itself I couldn't keep it down and um, I was seeing a doctor that was pretty far from where I lived and I decided to change that I thought that it doesn't work for me because I'm getting sick so much I need to see my doctor more and I can't cannot be I was living in Toronto at that time and I had to commute through the rush hour to go see her and I thought that wasn't practical um, my friends had suggested that I should seek a midwife and at that time I didn't know I had her premises um, so I went to a midwife and that was like within a month like I went to them and I told them what my situation was and whatnot and they're like okay you should do this and you should like uh, you know these are things these are things that we can recommend to you just you know um, they the thing about midwives is that they don't work for every person or every pregnant lady out there uh, they are very good at helping you or guiding you they're there for you when you need them you can just call them up and but they're not able to prescribe you anything they're not able to give you anything they weren't able to give me IV and at that point I was start taking I was taking gravel uh, which is a medication that you take uh, when you have nausea and that is usually and it's funny because I used to take gravel when I used to travel a lot uh, when I was little and I would get sick in the car a lot I don't get sick in the car anymore because I do travel a lot uh, now as well but at that time I remember I was using gravel at that time but I had to start using gravel um, but that wasn't working off on me because if I'm not able to keep water down I couldn't keep gravel down my stomach either um, so when I was seeing a midwife uh, they're like yeah yeah you know keep taking gravel try this and there was this other midwife that was uh, with her and she's like oh there's this uh, gravel that I can use that you have to insert in that area and first I was like oh okay and then I tried that as well that didn't work either um, I felt like I'm pretty sure they're helpful to a lot of pregnant women out uh, pregnant women out there and women who have normal pregnancies but mine was a severe case or my pregnancy was different so midwife was not helpful but again they are helpful they, she, they were helpful to one of my friends and who loved her so so much she's like I did not like my OB I liked my midwife because she was always there for me midwives did not work for me uh, they weren't able to give me any type of medication or any type of prescription they weren't able to prescribe to me because uh, they couldn't and uh, but they were like oh you try this medication from uh, the shelf and whatnot and nothing was working and when I was seeing midwives, I was getting hospitalized almost every three to four days. I would end up at the hospital. They would give me IV and and I thought I was getting better. And I was back to, you know, um, the throwing up and whatnot, right? So I was going to hospital every like two, three days. And that kind of became a routine for me. And I knew that I needed an OB um, but you know I was just having a hard time finding it and it was one of the midwives who suggested that there's this hospital um, I gave birth at the Trillium Hospital in Mississauga and um, they suggested that there's this doctor there her name is I'm not gonna say it I don't, I don't know if I should but they're like she's a really good doctor and I followed up with her and I was able to get her and by that time by the time I started seeing her I was already in my third month and that's when she started uh, giving me a, like a permanent solution to the throwing up and whatnot. So she put me on IV um, for as long as I needed it till, which is that there was a nurse who would come to see me every night and she would give me IV and they gave me this bag and it was like a portable bag um, and they would throw like the the IV bag in it and I was able to carry that IV bag everywhere I needed it so uh, remember guys for the nine months or for eight and a half eight months sorry I was going to work while I was pregnant and I thought that I had to do that because I was keeping myself busy but staying home being sick was hella depressing it drove me crazy I remember it was in February I took like a week off because I was not doing well it became really worse and I asked my manager he's like take a week off and I did and that was the most depressing 
that was like the most depressing part of my life I woke up crying because I was so weak and I had lost weight and I was like staring at the ceilings for hours and hours my husband was not home he was working and it was it was it was really scary right and I feel like at that time my body had tuned itself to the fact that okay I'm weak so I don't have to get up I was starting to just give up on like the fact that I have to be active um, not deliberately but I feel like I was losing energy so I started giving up on it I'm like okay um, I'm home I can't even get up I get nausea every time I go to the kitchen so why am I even going there I don't need to go to the living room I don't need to go anywhere so let me just lie in bed and relax and I don't know if it was a good thing or a bad thing but it was more depressing than anything and um, some people told me that I have to keep myself busy and I tried but when you're sick all you can think about is being sick if you're an IV all you can think about is that you have a needle in you at all times and that's how my first three four months went and by the time I started seeing my new OB who was very very helpful um, she decided to well even before her when I went to the emergency they gave me a pick line for those of you who don't know what a pick line is um, instead of poking a needle in my arm every time for IV uh, because I was trying to I realized because I wasn't hydrated enough um, they weren't able to find my veins and I they had a hard time finding my veins because of that they were just poking me everywhere which was very hurtful but I don't really mind it as much but when I was at the emergency, one of the doctors uh, there, they told me to get an APIC line. So APIC line is actually a tube. Um, there's a surgical procedure for it. Um, what they do is they insert that here. I, I'm gonna actually show you the marks, guys. I, they're still here. Oh my God, where are they? Oh, here. I don't know if you guys can see it. So this mark, this is a APIC line. So they insert this tube. Um, and they in keep inserting it till it goes somewhere here. It's a long tube and they kind of like tape it and um, I, and I'm able to easily connect that tube to the IV bag and that's it, right? Um, I don't have to do anything more. And like if I was doing the other regular IV, they had to just poke needle in my vein every time. So this was easier, but the disadvantage with this is that um, because if I got infected, it can spread uh, to the veins and whatnot. So that's really, really dangerous. So I remember I was really, really depressed because again, the pregnancy is not the pregnancy is not going great. And I got my winter holidays, and in December, I'm like I can't take this. So I literally booked a trip to Miami with my husband and left. And my husband was very skeptical. He's like, "Don't do this. Like, we're, you're gonna get sick, and we're gonna have to we're gonna have to find your doctor there." And I'm like, no, I can do this. You know, they had just taken me off IV for like, I was on IV for a week and I, they had just taken me off. I'm like, okay, I think I'm getting better. And I went anyway and I went for three days. So it wasn't that bad. But within the second, third day, I still, I started getting sick again. Um, but it wasn't that bad of a trip. But one thing is that I think I was taking a shower. So this is the other thing. When I had the pick line on, if that area had water anywhere near it, it could easily get infected. I think it was Miami. I was taking a shower this part was a little loose I had to have a bag but I think it didn't really work and when I came home this area turned white meaning that it was getting infected and within a month after they had to take that off and then they had to insert another uh, one right here oh right here it was right here so these are kind of like my marks to make me remind me that you know my pregnancy was real it was there um, I mean I don't think I took care of myself when I was taking a shower or I don't know if I was doing it right I had to like every time I took a shower I had to like bag this and just tape the end so water couldn't get in and unfortunately it did over there and I think it got infected and I was only there for three days I came back and the nurse saw that two weeks later she was like it's not that infected it's not as bad but just to be on the safe side you can't have any type of infection getting in so we gotta change this. So they took it out, they closed it up, and then they put up a line here. Again, it's a surgical procedure. It didn't really hurt that much because it doesn't really hurt that much because I think they numbed that area, so I was okay. But then 
just having that it was it was hard like it was really really hard it wasn't easy just going through that for I'm gonna say it was about six and a half months I was on IV and that's literally how my six months went I don't think my nausea got better but I, I was sensitive to all type of uh, smells or all type of food, coffee, chicken, whatnot. That got better. So I was like, okay, so if that's getting better, that means my nausea is getting better too. And whenever you see a doctor or when you meet a nurse, they're like, oh no, it's going to go away. We have met a lot of patients um, and they're done with their nausea by fourth of the month. If not the third month, even fourth of the month. So I thought I'm getting better. And my doctor, what she started doing is I was seeing her every week, once a week. And what she started doing is that, so the IV bag I was getting, they had gravel in it. So she started re uh, reducing the uh, dose of gravel in it because she wanted to take me off the IV bag gradually. And she was reducing it, I thought it was working. And by the end of the fifth month, I think, um, I think it was five, five and a half months. I don't think it was four months. It was five and a half, five to five and a half months. I'm like, okay, so I'm doing better. So she took me off for the first day. I did really well. I'm like, okay, so my nausea is done. I'm like so happy. I can eat right now. Um, second day was going okay. I thought I had a little bit of nausea. And the third day it hit me again. I started throwing up on water. I started throwing up on everything all over again. And guys, this is like five and a half months down the pregnancy. I'm just like, what is going on? So I went back to my doctor. I told her and she told me that I'd rather take you off IV and give you this medication called Zofren, uh, which is better for you than IV because IV is actually technically making you weaker over time because you're living on fluids that you're not getting that you're getting through wings and it's not good for you it's just making you more weak over time and when i was in my third month when i was going to the emergencies uh, one of the doctor has al had already suggested me zofrin and another name for zofrin is um on that on dancetron if i'm saying it right um that's how the doctors uh, would say it and they said that um and she she's like this is a bad she's like a lot of people say that this has side effects that it can but for a person like you you kind of need it and i resisted that because it's like i'm already in my sixth month i've heard like if you guys google this you guys will know that zofrin actually has side effects uh and had side effects for women giving birth birth and this is a type of medication that you actually give to um cancer patients because when they go to uh chemotherapy uh they start throwing up a lot and they go through all this um they go through this phase and they take zofrin so imagine taking a medication that's this hard and when i started taking it um i gave in i'm just like okay iv as hard as it is and my pick line i'm just scared that i'll get infected and that was another thing that I was always scared of because every time i had to take a shower which is almost every day i had to bag this whole thing and even if like a drop of water and went anywhere through that area it could get infected and, and i was always scared and she's like you have to take this off and you have to try this and i did and guys i'm still going to work and i'm trying to work every day and i was able to do it and remember when i went to pick up that medication from the pharmacy the woman was like are you driving are you sure you can drive after taking this she's like who prescribed you this i'm like my doctor she's like are you sure your pregnancy is this bad because this is only for people who have severe cases and i'm like yeah yeah, I'm like, I just came off IV after six months and my doctor wants me to have this. And I started taking it and I was not even taking the full tablet, I was taking only half of it. And taking half of it, when I started taking even like the half of it and I would take it like three times a day. Guys, I was drowsy throughout the day. I, my, when I was at work, my performance went down fully but they understood that my workplace was very like they were very helpful they were very um understanding they understood my situation my manager was very very nice i would talk to her about it all the time and uh, but the fact is that my performance went down like no tomorrow i was literally falling asleep at work i would be taking the, these time offs all the time but uh, my manager just she did not see anything because she knew what i was going through but then it was so bad that i was able to eat 
right but you know when you're taking a hard medication you don't feel you you feel like there's someone else that has taken over you and that's just like keeping you in a certain way i don't know if that makes sense but it was this really hard medication it's really hard i took it for like i took it till the time i gave birth and literally i was driving back and forth to work with that medication and um i was able to keep up with it i think it was good that way but i was always scared that it can have some type of side effect um my son was born um I'm not going to say he was born healthy. Yeah, he was born healthy. He hadn't had any side effects, which I'm really, really happy about. And he was born like 5 pounds, five pounds 12 ounces. So he was like, a, I'm not going to say he was underweight. Anything under 5 pounds is underweight. So he was born just a little over 5 pounds. And um, towards pregnancy, I did not gain any weight. In fact, I lost weight. Uh, but the weight I did gain was an extra 5 pounds. I was 107 and when I was uh, due for birth, I was 112 to 113 pounds. I literally just gained like enough weight. I just gained enough weight for the baby and I did not gain anything else. And towards pregnancy, I got weaker and weaker. I could feel them physically, physically getting weaker. And one of my friends told me that, again, I don't know if it's true. She told me that uh, what happens is that baby is gonna feed off you no matter what if you're not eating anything um baby is actually feeding off your uh, bone marrow so when i actually think about it if i wasn't eating enough he was uh literally taking my energy he was taking he was he is like he was feeding off my bone marrow which was making me weaker and i think i could feel it after i gave birth for the for one year after that i felt like my body was very weak um my back pains had gotten worse uh, nothing was going well and i had to start going to the gym and i got a trainer who was really helpful he helped me out a lot and it took me like i think at this point i'm sharing this story with you guys because i feel like at this point i'm able to talk about it i'm able to i think it took me one and a half year to actually get back to my normal self just to feel like myself again because i literally had lost that uh post-pregnancy or during pregnancy as well it was not the best experience and i think because i was drowsy taking that medication uh, for the last three months i feel like i don't remember a lot of stuff that happened i feel like it when people ask me i tell them it was more of a blur um i'm pretty sure there were good times too but this is what i mean when i say it i feel like the medication was so hard that i wasn't able to remember even like some of the good times that i may have had um, with my friends or whatnot you know how women talk about okay you know i could feel that connection i had with my baby when he or she was going inside of me i'm like i did not have any any of that because i was so i was so uh, focused i was so like uh, focused on like what i was going through i don't think i actually had a chance to actually uh, feel my body or see how my baby is doing and whatnot and i don't think that was a good experience i think that kind of traumatized me again you don't see something like that coming to you so you don't know what's going to happen to you and hyperemesis gravidarium this is something less than five percent of the women go through and um i unfortunately happen to be one of them but i feel like i want to look at this in a positive way that i came out of it and i came out of it stronger but again it was the most traumatizing experience um and I'm scared of going through that again. I don't think I can. That's what I tell my husband. So let's see. And let's just say if I was to get pregnant again, it's not easy because I don't want to be on a bed rest and I don't want to have like a toddler running around me all the time and I'm not able to give him like 100%. So that being given, I don't think I want to go through that. And then some people tell me that it may be different the second time. It may be or it may not be. So I don't know. So I don't want to take that risk. I don't think I can take that risk at the moment or uh, whatever the case is. But just talking about pregnancy, I can't even talk about it to people because I feel like it kind of makes me sad that I went through that. And then you know when you, it's in human nature to think, why me? And um, I mean, I went through that and I feel like at this point I'm at a better place. At this point, I can't say that I went through it, but I came out of it stronger um and that's literally it but yeah guys so this is my story it's a pretty long video i knew it was gonna go very long because i was gonna go in like so much detail 
uh, and this is what happened to me and I wanted to be real with myself and I wanted to be real with you guys so I just wanted to share my raw experience with you I didn't want to add any filters on it today and this is a different video than I've done and I hope uh, there's no message in this video I guess I just wanted to share my experience but if there was any message that you guys had to take out of this is that if there is any message out there it is that you know you never know what's going to happen to you so just be ready for it just learn to live in the moment if you can if you can it's okay but just don't let that get to you and this whole experience did get to me so if you guys have any stories that you guys want to share uh, leave them in the comments below i will be going through it and guys i'm sorry if not if i'm not able to reply back to the comments right away but i do read them so guys thank you so much for watching this video and i'll see you guys next week take care Bye.